Hi, my name's Dan Keen. I'm a composer, producer, and musician based in London. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today, I'm just setting my camera up because I've discovered something, and you might be watching and thinking, oh, that's obvious. But I'd never thought about it like this before. And um, I was basically just in Logic, tuning some samples with Melodyne, which is the plugin that people tend to use um, to tune vocals and stuff like that. However, there is an interesting quirk where if you hit on a note, and just hold it, it isolates the part of the sample that you clicked. However, if you then hold it and then move it to a different note, you then have the option to scrub within the waveform. So I was thinking about, you know, how could I use this to create some interesting textures? And I thought I'd just create five sounds using Melodyne and give them away to you for free as a kind of interesting experiment. So the way I've got this rooted, I root my audio through loopback here. So this is my microphone coming in and then this is Logic coming in to loopback. And then in Pro Tools, I have it recording in the background. So I've got the microphone on a separate channel. And what I'm literally going to do is I'm just going to play around with the sounds in Logic. And then afterwards, I'm going to take the audio files that I recorded in Pro Tools and put them into Logic to kind of warp them and mangle them. So if I'm going to be honest, I have no idea how this is going to sound. However, I am quite excited. This is a staccato patch from a new cello library that I'm working on. It's going to be a whole textural toolkit. It's going to be really, really cool, um, but it's not ready yet. Anyway, I thought I'd just kind of play around with some of these samples and see. This is quite a strong one. I think this was the loudest velocity there. So if I just zoom, this is as far in as I can get really to the samples. So let's just have a look. Now, I reckon tuning down will probably be easier than tuning up, but let's just see how this sample sounds. That could be an interesting kind of oscillating loop. If I just take this... Okay, how does this sound? We just take up another octave. if we take it up another octave. Right, I'm going to turn this down and then I'm going to go up one more.
Okay, well, that was a journey. Um, I've imported the audio now into Logic, and I'm going to give you this sample, if nothing else, to play with so that you can kind of mangle it yourself. There are some really interesting moments here which would be good to kind of go through and cut up. So, for example, that note. That could make for quite a nice loop. So what I'm going to do is... I don't even know if that's kind of... if that's regimented to a tempo, but it sounds pretty cool, so I'm just going to drop it into here. Let's just try that. Now you might think, well, what on earth is that? How are you going to turn that into a sample? Well, let's have a look at the frequencies. So the prominent one here is a, some kind of B somewhere. This one maybe? It's probably the octave below. So as we start to filter these samples, quite a lot of noise. So there's a big bit down here. Let's see if we can pull that out. Use the Saturn plugin here. And then drop drop this level. And then you can afford to turn down the drive on the section that is your fundamental. I'm then going to put another set of satin on there, but I'm going to change this dynamics control. Next, I'm going to put a little bit of CLA-76. Okay, so now let's create an instance of contact and let's auto map, set to single key. And so now if we just spread this across the keyboard. Now I believe it wasn't actually a B5, it was a B4. Which sounds okay. However, we can now go into the wave editor, is it? Sync slash slice. Time Machine Pro. Okay, so from this, I've gleaned that we need a bit of distortion, so it really cuts through. Let's turn that down. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, that would be good. And then let's just... And I think we should have something that kind of makes it a little bit edgy. So I'm going to add some Pan Man to give it a bit of panning. And I'm actually going to have it kind of fade up a little bit in volume and then go back down again. during that transient it should come down okay so let's bounce that out aggressive B4 sounds pretty cool can we adjust the tempo now say 90 Pretty cool. See, that sounds quite interesting. Again, might not, but let's just have a look. So, where the sample first starts there until, I guess we, mm, yeah, if we do it like that. Actually, I quite like the rhythm of the first time. Now I'm going to attempt here to bring down that resonant frequency. Let's just see how that sounds. I don't know, it could sound horrible. Let's call this one a uh, gentle loop. Actually, it's kind of a gentle glitch, isn't it? And again, B4, I think it is. That's bloody cool. if we kind of turn this down a little bit and then added a low cut filter and a high cut filter
am utterly inspired right now, and I hope you are too. It's just, it's so musical. Right, this, that's the second one. Let's see. Oh, I'm getting really excited about this. Let's see what else we've got in here. What other gems? <laughs> Okay, let's see how that sounds. So let's drop this in. And then I'm gonna stop it right there. Okay. Okay, so there's a resonant frequency which I like but there's some kind of dirt above it. So let's just see having this keyboard feature is really, really useful. Okay, let's put this through a decapitator. I'm going to try putting it through a bit of reverb. Let's try the Pro R. put this before the sub bass because the sub bass is getting a little bit confused. Great. Let's bounce that out. So let's call this slow rise. That's a B flat. So we need to call it A sharp two. So let's take this off beat machine mode and let's loop it. I'm going to take this down to like 50%. Let's turn up the attack. Let's turn up the release, 300. And as before, I'm just going to take this and apply a bit of a high cut. And then what you could do is you could take your AU pitch plugin, put this up by an octave, which is 1200.
Pretty cool. Let's add that to the bank of instruments that you could have. So that's pretty cool. Um, if we bring this down into here, what we could actually do with this is I'm actually just going to cut them up into little sections here. And then these just play on their own again. Okay, let's open our friend AU Pitch again. Let's call this sharp pulse into another instrument we go. I hope you're having fun watching this, by the way. Um, this is true exploration at its most free. Let's make sure that this loops. Okay, so I think the issue there is that the pitch actually gets in the way. So I'm going to turn the effect blend down and let's just replace that. And I think we actually need to pull some more of this. So I'm going to go like that. course if you turn the tempo up the last one I'm going to do I'm going to try and make something long that just kind of sustains a bit nicely We take this and then cut it there. That's quite nice as well. Now, because I like the sound of it kind of looping around like that, um, I'm going to drag it out like this so we, we get that natural sound.
Thank you so much for watching this video until the end. If you did enjoy it, please click thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done already. I'm going to leave these linked down below along with the whole session so that you can go through and kind of loop and tweak to your heart's content. I'm so pleased that I decided to film this because it's just, it's so fun playing with this stuff. And I've never used the beat machine functions before or the time machine functions, but I'm grateful to Christian and also the other people who've been posting about it recently because this new cello library I'm working on is going to be an absolute monster and more coming on that soon. If you want to be notified the next time I put a video up, hit the little bell button. See you again soon. Bye-bye.